Wrath of the Lich King, the most popular WoW expansion of all time, with the player base reaching its highest ever at 12 million subscribers on October 2010, and with news of Wrath of the Lich King Classic on the horizon, you're probably thinking about how to prepare, because with a new expansion comes new changes, and professions have changed in a big way in Wrath, which might make you wonder which profession is best for you. With the addition of profession passive and active bonuses, profession linking, and a ton of new recipes unlocked through profession daily quests, choosing your profession is a really big decision, both in terms of a time investment and gold, and you also really won't want to have to unlearn a profession and start over. In this video, we'll be discussing the profession bonuses for each profession, both passive and active, how the profession compares to the others, which class should go which profession, and the ability for the profession to generate gold. There's also a new profession added in Wrath called Inscription, and you'll definitely want to know about what it brings to the game. And by the end of the video, hopefully you'll know which profession you want to pursue in Wrath. Engineering. The crafting of silly trinkets and fun, but useless items. Just kidding. Engineering in Wrath is a lot like engineering in vanilla. It's simply the strongest profession. Engineering in Wrath has so many powerful items that can enhance your character in both PvP and PvE situations that you're basically just at a disadvantage if you're not an engineer. This time it comes in the flavor of tinkers to your item, which are like enchantments. This is a great change because in the past if you wanted a fun engineering item, you usually sacrificed stats. Now in Wrath, you can keep the high stat best in slot item, but still have a fun engineering tinker attached to it. And if you were wondering, you can't have both a tinker and an enchantment on an item. It's one or the other. But if you end up going engineering, you'll be feeling like Inspector Gadget in no time. First off, there's the Runic Mana Injector and Runic Healing Injector, which grant an increased effect for engineers. So if you're playing a mana-hungry class, using these Runic Mana Injectors as an engineer can be a great reason to go engineering. There's also fun things like the Mind Amplification Dish, which is a tinker to your helm. This allows you to engage in a mental battle with your enemies, attempting to mind control them. This can be pretty nifty if you're standing on a high ledge and you decide that you want your new pet to jump. The hand-mounted pyro rocket is best in slot for PvP, offering a 45 second 2k fire damage attack, often used as additional burst to get a kill in arena, since it's not on the GCD so you can just macro it in, and certainly a nice DPS boost if used on cooldown. There's also hyperspeed accelerators, which is a glove tinker, which increases your haste by 340 for 12 seconds with a minute cooldown. Since this is also a glove tinker, so you can't have other enchantment or tinkers on this. You'll have to pick this or the Pyro Rocket, for example, not both. This is best in slot for PvE for many classes. While the Pyro Rocket is mainly used for burst damage, this is more overall powerful because your haste will benefit you more as your gear improves, where the Rocket will always do that 2k fire damage. This increased haste can be used to make your Gargoyle much stronger as a Death Knight, make Divine Police shorter and give you mana back faster, and anything else where haste would be helpful. Another powerful tinker and is really another best in slot item in PvE for some classes is the Frag Belt, which attaches as an enchantment to your belt, allowing you to throw a Cobalt Frag Bomb every six minutes. The Frag Bomb does about 1k fire damage and incapacitates for three seconds in a three yard radius. This is great for AoE encounters and can even be very helpful in some PvP scenarios. Nitro Boosts is another engineering only tinker, this time for your boots. It grants 24 crit rating and on activation grants a large run speed increase for five seconds. These are the goblin rocket boots you remember, but they don't break, which is really nice to have a reliable speed increase on a three minute cooldown. These boots are paired nicely with the flex weave underlay tinker. Instead of having a really weak parachute cloak with no stats, you can now attach the flex weave underlay to your stat filled cloak and it will increase agility by 23 and allow you to activate slow fall for 30 seconds with only a minute cooldown. This can be very helpful in many situations. A welcome sight for any anyone in Wrath is Jeeves, the gentleman robot butler, which engineers can craft and summon, which grants bank access to the engineer and serving as a vendor with repairs for everyone else. Engineers are also the only profession which has access to an auction house in Dalaran. Inside the engineering building, there is a robot called Brass Bolt Mecha Wrench, which acts as a steam-powered auctioneer for engineers. All other professions will need to go to a different major city to access the auction house. This could be a selling point for you, but many people just mail their stuff to a bank alt to put up 
on the Option House. Engineers can also make the Mechanohog if you're a Horde, or the Mech Engineers Chopper if you're Alliance, which is a two-person ground epic mount. The mount is BOE and not exclusive to Engineers though, so it could be another way to make some extra gold as an Engineer. And then there's the portable mailbox you can create called Moly mobile oversized letter and literary extractor. This can be used every two hours and can be convenient if you're out in the world expecting mail without a mailbox in sight, or if you wanna try and attract a night elf to dance on top of it, whatever, it's your mailbox. But if that night elf isn't the Goldshire Inn type, then you can get what you came for another way, with the Gnomish X-Ray specs, which allow you to see players without their clothing and armor. And if Night Elves aren't your type, there's always the Critter Enlarger, which enlarges a critter to twice its normal size. And once the guards catch on to what you're up to, you can make your quick escape with the new Wormhole Generator Northrend. Although, you might want to put your clothes back on before you go, though. I heard it's cold up there. There are even more gadgets than this, some more useful than others, which allow you to do, well, all sorts of shenanigans and get away with it too, as long as there's no meddling kids around. The continent of Northrend holds many gems, and with it, many new opportunities for jewel crafting. Like in TBC, there's three new qualities of gems. The green uncommon gems, which are actually pretty common, the blue rare gems, which can sell for quite a bit of coin, and the purple epic gems, which, like in TBC, were added not in release, but in patch 3.2.0, and are the best in slot gems, and accordingly, the most expensive. Like cooking, you'll need to collect tokens from daily quests in order to purchase jewel crafting designs. These tokens are called Dalaran Jewel Crafters Token. It's actually really important to do your daily quests because exchanging Dalaran Jewel Crafters tokens are the only way to get a lot of best-in-slot designs. There's also a cool new addition in Wrath called the Nightmare Tier, which matches any socket and adds plus 10 to all stats. Most serious players will want one for their BIS gear because it's unique equipped, which means you can only equip one, and usually are using it to take the place of a blue socket, since that socket typically is just used for half stamp and half the stat you actually want. And with new ore in Northrend brings new prospecting. This time even uncommon or green quality titanium ore can be prospected, in addition to cobalt and sarenite ore. Prospecting titanium ore has an added bonus though. The titanium powder that you get from prospecting can be exchanged in stacks of 10 for a single dollar on jewel crafters token, which can be exchanged again for those new designs we were talking about earlier as an alternative to grinding dailies. The jewel crafting specific bonus is the same as in TBC. There are jewel crafting only gems, which are a step above anything other players can get. These gems are better by a factor slightly above what other profession bonuses give in terms of raw stats. However, it's worth noting noting that the bonuses from most professions come in terms of spell power or attack power, but with jewel crafting only gems, you get to choose the raw stat you want, like agility, which grants increased chance to dodge, critical strike rating, and attack power, which is better than just attack power alone, for example, for some classes. This is an often overlooked advantage to jewel crafting, and many min-maxers will argue jewel crafting is the second best profession in the game, right behind engineering. When it comes to making gold, jewel crafting is great. With the increased exclusivity of the designs gated behind Dalaran tokens, if you have a design that not a lot of other people have, you can make some serious gold. That, and along with prospecting ore for gems, you can prospect your way to tons of gold using a process called the Saronite Shuffle. This is just a fancy name for buying or mining Saronite ore, prospecting it, and then either cutting the gems you get and selling them, using them to craft an item which you then disenchant, or if you're also an alchemist, transmuting the gems into meta gems, which you can then cut. The profits made from the Saronite Shuffle will allow you to buy more Saronite ore, and you continue the process. Your server's prices will ultimately determine if this will work out though, so your mileage may vary. Alchemy, suppliers of those flasks you keep chugging down. With a new expansion comes new flasks, and more money to be made as an alchemist. Just like in TBC, raiders will be wanting to bring their flask of choice to the raid, and other potions as needed to ensure they are maximizing their parse. But other than just potions and flasks, alchemists have access to new alchemist stones, powerful trinkets which make the potions you drink more effective, and it also has some nice stats on it. There's one for tanks, spellcasters, and physical damage dealers. This trinket is incredibly powerful 
for healers who will be getting a whopping 40% more mana back when using a mana potion, and this alone is a big selling point for healers to go alchemy and wrath. There's also the Crazy Alchemist's Potion, which is a new alchemist-only potion granting health and mana, and sometimes the effect of an additional random potion, which could be a mana potion, granting the alchemist a huge burst of mana. All these alchemy-only benefits make alchemy a very appealing choice for mana-hungry classes. Also, a new addition is Mixology, granting the alchemist an increased effect and duration when drinking any elixir or flask which the alchemist is able to make. This increased effect is about equal to the stats gained from blacksmithing and slightly less than jewel crafting, and the increased duration can save you some flasks over time. This profession bonus is perfect for frequent raiders who will be downing flasks each raid in order to capitalize on that mixology bonus. When it comes to learning new recipes, there's a new feature called Northrend Alchemy Research, which requires 400 skill and helps an alchemist discover new recipes by using herbs from Northrend. It has a 3-day cooldown reduced from 7 days after patch 3.0.8 and randomly creates elixirs and flasks and allows you to discover new alchemy recipes. The recipe you discover depends on your skill in alchemy. Having a higher skill will allow you to discover higher skill requirement recipes. There are also still cooldowns like transmutes available in Wrath, and discovering new transmutes is done by performing a Wrath transmute with a cooldown, which is typically around 20 hours. Some of these transmutes are quite high value, such as the Transmute Cardinal Ruby, turning a Scarlet Ruby and an Internal Fire into a Cardinal Ruby, which is the epic red gem in Wrath. This Transmute specifically is learned from completing a quest from the Master Alchemy Trainer in Dalaran upon reaching 450 skill. There's also the highly valuable meta gem Transmutes in Wrath, such as Transmute Earth Siege Diamond, which combines uncommon green gems and an Eternal Fire to create Earth Siege Diamonds, which can then be cut by a Jewel Crafter into a meta gem that can be placed into gear. Data. Druids for the ethical treatment of animals. If you're a skinner, you better watch out, because these druids will come after you if they see you covered in the blood of an animal, which does happen, but only in Berean Tundra. But forget about them. Northrend is ripe with animals just begging to have their hides skinned for fun and profit. There are six new types of leathers. Berean leather, heavy Burian leather, arctic fur, Jormungar scales, icy dragon scales, and Nerubian chitin. As you might have guessed, skinning dragon kin will give you icy dragon scales, which will actually be very valuable since they are used by leather workers to create ice scale leg armor, which is the best in slot armor enhancement. But not all these leathers are just for crafting though. Some are also used as currency to purchase epic leatherworking patterns in Dalaran, and you can even trade 10 heavy Burian leathers for an arctic fur. These epic leatherworking patterns can be traded from Brag Stout Beer in Dalaran. These patterns are BOP though, so if you're not a leather worker then your best option is to sell the leather rather than to trade them for the patterns. But this makes leather workers need to consider getting skinning if they want easy access to these patterns, but you could just also purchase the leather needed to get these patterns too, if you have the gold. The new passive bonus for skinning and wrath is Master of Anatomy, which like other gathering professions, passive bonuses scale with your level and profession skill. This passive grants 40 critical strike rating at max skill and level, which is 0.87% increased chance to crit. Like other gathering professions, it's not really good enough to warrant getting this profession if you're actually trying to min-max. Tailoring in Wrath has a lot of similarities to tailoring in TBC and Vanilla. It doesn't require a gathering profession since you can get cloth from humanoids without one, and it has valuable cloths on cooldowns which are used to make other valuable items. But there are also new additions to tailoring and wrath. An often forgotten new tailoring exclusive ability is Northern Cloth Scavenging, which grants tailors the passive ability to find additional cloth on Northrend humanoids. Cloth usually doesn't sell for a whole lot, but as a tailor this can be very helpful for making additional bolts of frostweave, which are used to make a lot of items. Including including the Bolt of Imbued Frostweave, which can be used to make epic items, frostweave bags, and three new types of tailoring cloths, all on a four-day cooldown. 
just like in TVC. Moonshroud, Spellweave, and Ebonweave. In order to make Spellweave, you'll need a bolt of Imbued Netherweave, two Eternal Fire, which are the Wrath of the Lich King version of Primals, and you'll need to be at the Azure Dragon Shrine in Dragonblight. For Ebonweave, you'll need that bolt of Imbued Netherweave, along with two Eternal Shadow, and you need to be at the Maw of Naltharian in Dragonblight. And for Moonshroud, you'll need a bolt of Imbued Netherweave, along with two Eternal Life, and be at the Emerald Dragon Shrine in Dragonblight. So less Eternals needed than Primals in TBC where you needed about two or three different Primals to make the cloth and it's a bit better than in TBC where you were running around from Shadowmoon Valley all the way to Netherstorm in order to make your cooldowns every four days. Now it's all in Dragonblight which is a nice change. And you can bet with all the reagents behind cooldowns that these cloths will generate you some nice gold. And they are also used to create embroideries which are powerful cloak enhancements only available to tailors, which grant a huge stat proc, depending on the embroidery. One such embroidery is Sword Guard Embroidery, which grants a chance on melee or ranged hit to increase attack power by 400 for 15 seconds. Another one is Dark Glow Embroidery, which gives a chance on spellcast to restore 400 mana. And then there's Light Weave Embroidery, granting a chance on spellcast to increase spell power by 295 for 15 seconds, all with a 60 second internal cooldown. These are the three embroideries, so as you can see, there's not really one for a tank, so if that's you, Taylor probably isn't a good fit, but for healers and damage dealing classes, these procs can be very powerful, especially in PvP when you're looking for some big burst damage. It's worth mentioning that these procs are far more powerful than what any other profession offers in terms of stat bonuses, and some argue that tailoring is the second best profession behind engineering and wrath for DPS. Because of the random occurrences of these stat bonuses, I can see how sometimes it might be stronger than other profession bonuses if you stack other cooldowns when you get the proc, but you could also get really unlucky with the timing of your procs, and the consistent stats offered by jewel crafting, for example, could be better. So if you like to roll the dice with your chances, tailoring might be the second best profession for you if you're min-maxing. On a less serious note, tailors can learn to craft a new rug. This rug isn't just any rug, though. It's actually a magnificent flying carpet, which is an epic flying mount only available for tailors. It's a pretty iconic flying mount appearing in Wrath, and if you go tailor you should look into getting it because it looks really cool and it's only available for tailors. Blacksmithing. We're finally getting into the good stuff. This profession has earned the reputation as one of the hardest and slowest to level and requiring immense amounts of materials, requiring you to do tedious profession quests, and in Wrath, it doesn't really have as good craftable gear as in TBC. TBC brought incredibly powerful weapons that led the likes of shamans and rogues to go blacksmithing because the weapons were just so good. But in Wrath, the gear that blacksmiths can really make aren't as powerful compared to other options. However, blacksmithing can still provide you with powerful gear and BOE gear too, which makes it a better money-making profession than before. But it's not the blacksmithing you know from TBC. The really big new improvement that makes Wrath blacksmithing really worth it is the extra sockets you can add to your gear. Socket Gloves and Socket Bracer are blacksmith-only enhancements which allow you to add extra gems to your gear. This enhancement is lost if you drop blacksmithing, so it's a good incentive to keep it, and it's a good stat boost. It's also worth mentioning that unlike other profession bonuses, which are usually attack power or spell power, with blacksmithing it's a socket, which can be used for stats like agility, which not only grant attack power, but also increase dodge chance and your chance to score a critical strike with a weapon in addition to attack power. For this reason, Blacksmithing is a tier above other profession-only bonuses which grant just attack power, as an example. The other benefit is the Eternal Belt Buckle, which is BOE and anyone can use. This adds a socket to a belt, and you can sell these belt buckles for a great profit, considering nearly everyone is going to want to have the stats of an extra socket on their belt. But other than those three sockets, which can help any class, the gear is mostly plate, so I'd recommend only Paladins, Death Knights, and Warriors go this profession. Because of the immense number of materials required to 
level it, pairing it with mining is a great choice. A lot of the stronger items from blacksmithing require frozen orbs, which drop from heroic dungeons, similar to primal nethers in TBC, and other professions use them to craft too, so there will be competition to get them. Other than frozen orbs, there are also ruined orbs from Olduar, like nether vertices, and crusader orbs, which drop from TOC, all used in the creation of epic blacksmithing plans. But, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of it is BOE, so there is another opportunity to make some gold if your gear is better than what you can craft. Do you love books? Do you love writing? Then maybe you should become a scribe. Inscription is the new profession in Wrath, along with a new feature for all players glyphs. These glyphs enhance their spells in both major and minor ways. Major glyphs can significantly alter your gameplay and make a substantial difference for your character, while minor glyphs are usually cosmetic in nature or making spells no longer require reagents, making your gameplay a little bit less inconvenient. Scribes make these glyphs using ink, milled from herbs found in Azeroth and beyond, making herbalism the natural profession to pair with inscription. Scribes can also write tomes to hold in your offhand, which are beneficial to spellcasters like mages, warlocks, druids, and priests, even shaman, making them ideal for inscription. Scribes can also write scrolls, which from before this point we just found them all over the place randomly, but now we can get a consistent supply with inscription. Most notably though is the ability for scribes to write vellums, which can absorb enchants and store them for later use. This effectively allows enchanters a means to sell their enchants other than spamming trade chat. Good riddance. <laughs> just kidding. Players can then use these vellums with enchants stored on them to enchant their own gear, finally eliminating the last bit of social interaction required for getting your gear fully gemmed and enchanted. Another neat thing scribes can do is create dark moon cards. These cards are completely random, having a number between 2 and 8, and being in a random deck such as death, nobles, chaos, prisms, or undeath. By clicing all the cards in the suit, you can combine them into an item that starts a quest chain leading you to the powerful trinket. The profession only bonus is that scribes can create shoulder inscriptions for themselves. These can have spell power, dodge, attack power, and so on, and so they're good for any class. These enchants are stronger than the next best enchant you get from being exalted with the Sons of Hodir, so it is the best in slot shoulder enchant by about the same amount as you get in stats from other professions. It also saves you from having to grind Sons of Hodir rep, so if you absolutely hate grinding rep, that could be another reason to go inscription and still be competitive. Leatherworking in Wrath is similar to how it was in TBC. You can make valuable leg armors that are best in slot for many classes, and drums of battle are still somewhat helpful even after being nerfed with the tinnitus debuff, which makes you unable to benefit from drums while the debuff is on. There's even a new drum called Drums of the Wild, which gives Gift of the Wild to all party and raid members, which could be helpful if there's no druid around. There's also lots of epic patterns that you can trade hides for in Dalaran, and also patterns that drop in Ulduar, Trial of the Crusader, and Icecrown Citadel. Because the craftable gear is mainly leather and mail, the classes that fit leatherworking the best are rogues, hunters, druids, and shaman. But a lot of these items are BOE, so if you aren't one of those classes, you can still make the gear and sell it. Other than epic patterns and leg armors, there's new leatherworker-only fur linings. These enhancements attach to bracers and offer a range of nice stat boosts. For example, Fur Lining Spell Power offers a 46 spell power upgrade over the next best enchantment for bracers. There are also a bunch of resistance fur linings like Fire, Frost, Nature, and Shadow, and other stats like Attack Power or even just Raw Stamina, so there's a fur lining for any class. These extra resistance fur linings are often overlooked but can be helpful situationally for certain raids like Sartharion in the Obsidian Sanctum, Dragosa in Naxxramas, Lich King in Icecrown Citadel, or Halion in the Ruby Sanctum. So if you're a tank, you may want leatherworking to get the resistances you want more easily. There's also two leatherworking only leg enhancements called Jormungar leg reinforcements, which is the same as Frosthide leg armor, which is not leatherworking only. There's also Nerubian leg reinforcements, which are the same as Ice Scale leg armor. The only difference between the
these leatherworking only enhancements and what's available to everyone else is that they are dramatically easier to create. For example, the Jormungar leg reinforcements just need two Jormungar scales to create, where the Frosthide leg armor needs a frozen orb, which comes from a heroic dungeon, two Nerubian chitin, and two Arctic fur. So another advantage of being a leather worker is getting your best in slot leg enhancement much easier than everyone else, even though they offer the same exact stats. For those who prefer to spend their days picking flowers, herbalism offers many rewards. Like in the past, herbalism can provide a constant stream of income since herbs can be used for alchemy, but in Wrath, herbs are now needed in order to mill pigments and inks for inscription. That means herbalism will be an even greater money-making profession, considering the increased demand. Like mining, herbalism offers a profession-specific bonus, in addition to being a gathering profession. That bonus is a self-heal over time called lifeblood, which grows more powerful based on your skill with herbalism, your character level, and your maximum health. The heal is 3,600 at max rank baseline, but again, can be increased based on your maximum health, and it also can be used while stealthed or invisible without breaking stealth. Like the mining bonus, it isn't game-breakingly good, because gathering professions are already such a great profession to have for all the materials you bring in, so if you're min-maxing, herbalism probably isn't going to be something you have on your main. Enchanters. Only good for allowing you to press that disenchant button instead of the greed button when useless gear drops. Just kidding, enchanters. I love you guys. Enchanting and Wrath got a big quality of life change. Vellums. These vellums are created by scribes, which is the inscription profession and allows enchanters to use their enchantments on these vellums, storing them, which can then be used by anyone to enchant their gear with that same vellum. This allows enchanters to capitalize on the convenience of the auction house instead of constantly spamming trade chat and successfully eliminates the last bit of social interaction required in this game. With a new expansion comes new enchants that will inevitably be in demand for all classes, such as new weapon enchants like berserking. The profession-specific bonus for enchanting is the same as in TBC, ring enchants. These ring enchants can increase attack power by a total of 80, spell power by 46, or stamina by 60 when both rings are enchanted. These bonuses are pretty average compared to what's offered by other professions. For example, even mining grants 60 stamina, which makes the enchanting stat bonus the exact same if you're a tank. But enchanting does offer the disenchant utility for groups and raids, and it's easier to make gold now with the addition of vellums, so you'll have to weigh your options, but most serious players will have an enchanter as an alt, since the profession-only bonus isn't as appealing as other professions. Gathering professions have always been the profession you get on your alt, or temporarily on your main to gather materials to supply another profession, but in Wrath, Blizzard tried to buff gathering professions to make them a little bit stronger. Access to the frozen continent of Northrend allows miners access to new ore, which is essential for either smelting bars or just the raw ore for jewel crafting, blacksmithing, and engineering. Because these professions need access to ore and bars to craft, mining is a lucrative profession like it always has been. However, mining usually didn't grant much of a competitive advantage other than making gold or supplying your trade skill with materials. But in Wrath, mining also comes with a new passive health buff which grants more and more stamina based on your skill with mining, maxing out at 60 mana. This health buff isn't anything to go crazy over compared to other profession bonuses, but it's not just mining. All three of the other gathering professions have pretty weak profession-only bonuses, probably because gathering professions are already so important for the rest of the professions. The new ores available are Cobalt, Saranite, and and titanium, in order from lowest skill required to mine to highest, very similar to the three TBC ores, Fell Iron, Adamantite, and Corium. Titanium ore is used to create Titan Steel Bars, which are in demand for creating powerful or fun endgame items, like Jeeves, the gentleman robot butler, granting bank access to engineers and serving as a vendor with repairs for everyone else. Smelting Titan Steel originally had a day-long cooldown, so it was very in demand and expensive, and finally gave miners a cooldown they could sell. But in patch 3.3.3, repeating, the cooldown was removed, so depending on what patch we get in Wrath of the Lich King Classic, the price on these bars could vary. Overall, mining continues to be a great money-making profession and is very helpful if you plan on going blacksmithing, jewel crafting, or engineering so you can supply your own materials. Fishing has always been one of the most fascinating professions. 
It might not be the most exciting to level, but there's a lot of fun to be had with fishing up random junk, but also the occasional gem. And with the addition of new events in Wrath, like the Kaloak Fishing Derby, there are plenty of reasons to level up your fishing skill to max. And since it's a secondary profession, there's no reason not to. Fishing provides the reagents needed for consumables like dragon fin fillet and spiced fried herring, as well as feasts like gigantic feast and fish feast, which provide the well-fed food buff. You can also fish up the incredibly rare sea turtle mount, which, while it moves slowly on land, has increased swim speed while in water, which is really cool. And let's be honest, a turtle mount just looks amazing. There's also a non-combat pet you can fish up called the giant sewer rat. In Northrend, Grandmaster Trainer Marcia Chase offers fishing dailies. She's by the fountain in Dollar on and has five different daily quests, which all take place in Northrend. As a reward for these quests, you'll receive a bag of fishing treasures. The rewards from this bag are similar to the rewards from TBC. It has a chance to drop the Strand Crawler, which is a non-combat pet crab, which is pretty cool since the drop rate is incredibly low, making it a very rare pet. There are also some other really rare items you can find with less than a 1% chance of appearing from the bag of fishing treasures, like a bone fishing pole or jeweled fishing pole, which both grant plus 35 fishing skill, a stylish looking weather beaten fishing hat which grants plus 5 fishing skill, or a tiny titanium lockbox which you'll need to lockpick to open. With the tiny titanium lockbox there's a chance to find the 5 ring which if you're keeping count we should be on the 3 ring in Wrath but the flavor text on the ring says this ring appears to have eaten the 3 and 4 rings. This ring has less stat diversity as the 1 and 2 rings, only granting stamina, hit rating, and critical strike rating, but it's a fun continuation of the Lord of the Rings joke started in vanilla with fishing up the one ring. The tiny titanium lockbox can also give you epic cut gems like ruined storm jewel or uncut blue gems like sky sapphire, random gear, quest items, and most of all, junk. A very high chance to get lots of useless junk. One of the most exciting reasons to level fishing, though, is that every Saturday from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. server time, the Kaloak Fishing Derby takes place. It begins when Elder Clearwater, who appears by the fountain in Dalaran an hour before the event starts, makes the announcement. Similar to the Stranglethorn Fishing Extravaganza, the Kaloak Fishing Derby is a race to see who can bring back a black tip shark. This shark can be found in any Northrend body of water, but has a higher chance of being caught in a school of fish, and the chance to fish one up is pretty low, so sometimes you might not catch one at all. If you're the first player to bring back a black tip shark to Elder Clearwater, you'll have the reward choice of either Boots of the Bay, which grants plus 15 fishing, and a on-use effect to, that's right, the bay. The Booty Bay. It does have a super long one-day cooldown, though. Or, you can choose the Dread Pirate Ring, which is an heirloom granting stamina, critical strike rating, hit rating, and a 5% increased experience from monsters and quests. This item is an enabler for your altaholism, and you can bet altaholics will be all all over it. And if you don't win the fishing derby, you can still turn in your shark after the winner and get a bag of fishing treasures. When it comes to making gold with fishing, there's always a way to profit from fishing. Fish are valuable consumes for cooking, either for cooks looking to power level the profession, or for end game raiders looking to get their best in slot well fed buff, which comes from a fish. Overall, fishing has a lot of new awesome rewards, so you can bet there'll be a lot of players leveling fishing and participating in the Kaloak Fishing Tournament each Saturday. The biggest change to cooking is the introduction of feasts. These feasts make being a cook in Wrath of the Lich King valuable to a raid or group. Like a mage table or a soul well, you can lay down a feast which everyone can eat from and all get a well-fed buff. So, any party or raid members that forget to bring food, you are there to save the day. The Great Feast grants attack power, spell power, and stamina, so it can be helpful regardless of your class. Like in TBC, Wrath has cooking daily quests with rewards, but unlike TBC, there are a lot more recipes you can get from daily quests. In Wrath, daily quests reward Dalaran cooking awards, which can be redeemed at the Dalaran cooking supplier for a ton of different recipes. A fun one is Tracker Snacks, which gives you the ability to track beasts as a well-fed effect, or Blackened Warg Steak to track humanoids, or even Critter Bites, which allow you to control critters. And if you collect 100 of them, you can even get a rare chef's hat. 
When it comes to making gold, raiders will always want their best in slot well fed buff, so you can bet you'll be able to make money with cooking throughout the expansion, and depending on the food, it might make sense to also have fishing with it. Overall, cooking is a fun profession in Wrath, but also has the practical benefits that you're familiar with from vanilla and TBC. And again, since it's a secondary profession, it doesn't count towards your maximum of two primary professions. First aid doesn't change all that much from TBC to Wrath, but since it's a secondary profession, you should level it, considering there's no downside to having it. Wrath brings two new bandages you can make from the new Northrin cloth called Frostweave. This cloth, like all before, it drops off humanoids and is found exclusively in Northrend. First aid hasn't been much of a gold-making profession, and in Wrath that doesn't change. It's really just a good utility profession that can help situationally. The two new bandages are Frostweave bandages and Heavy Frostweave bandages. The only noteworthy thing about First Aid and Wrath is that the manual for learning Heavy Frostweave bandages is a BOP world drop, so you'll have to find it yourself. Usually it doesn't take too long to get, but if you know you're that one really, really unlucky guy, you know who you are. Plan accordingly. And that is the end of the profession picking guide. It might be helpful to see all the bonuses on a single screen, so here they are. Note though that these are just the raw stats and not inclusive of everything the profession has to offer. If you want that, I suggest checking out the timestamps and watching all the way through. Overall, engineering is widely accepted as the best profession in Wrath, with jewel crafting being in second place. Tailoring and alchemy are both close contenders for second place, depending on your play style and if you prefer PvP or PvE. Blacksmithing is also another strong profession with the extra two sockets in terms of raw stats. Other than those, enchanting, leatherworking, and inscription are all pretty equal in terms of stats and aren't far behind the others. The main difference being that they offer attack power instead of strength or agility, for example, and there are other bonuses with the base stat. And all the gathering professions have the weakest bonuses because, well, they're already providing a lot with the ability to gather in-demand materials for all the other professions. With all that said, hopefully now you have a better idea of which profession you want to pick in Wrath. As always, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a like, it really helps a lot, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. That's all for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.